anybody here attending this meeting for the very first time? First time in like three years. First time in my case. <laughs> yes. Quite a while. Quite a while. I see some familiar faces. That's good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start. Um, this month's speaker is Ruben Ahmed. He's going to talk about uh, reality-based user interfaces, which has something to do with that. He's going to show us his refrigerator here and, and this, you know, this welder's uh, goggles and so on. Uh, I, I, I take it you guys are interested in that, so we're going we're to hopefully satisfy your interest. Uh, I want to announce that next month, December, holiday month, we will not have a .NET SIG. I'm sorry. Uh, January, we always run into conflict with Code Mash because they're like the same week that we never normally schedule this meeting at. A lot of them go to, how many are going to Code Mash? None of you, right? No. Um, but so we're not gonna we're not gonna do January either. We will be back in February, and it's gonna be on our on on uh, uh, programming Windows on a Raspberry Pi and Internet of Things and whatever else we program in. Uh, so there will be a, a real nice program in February to make up for the two months that we're skipping. But we have a real nice program tonight. Um, Ruben's one of our top uh, consultants at Ben Adelson. He's been doing a lot of things for us for a long time. Uh, I have no idea if he knows anything about, about uh, reality-based user interfaces, but we're going to find out real soon. Um, so please give Ruben your attention, and thanks for coming. Oh, and in front of you is an eval form. Uh, at some point during the night, if you would fill that out and let us know what you think about this program and what you'd like to see coming up if uh, you have any future topics. Uh, no. And with that, I'll give you a room. All right, thanks a lot. All right, cool. So this is reality-based user interfaces. Uh, just before I start really quickly, I just want to let everybody know I did try to run this presentation. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I did try to run this presentation last night, and it, it definitely went over. Um, so because I have a smaller crowd right now, it will be helpful probably for me to be able to speed up through some of the topics that maybe make sense to most of you guys. Um, and I should be able to control a little better with that. So. Uh, the first thing uh, is, I don't have Marty McFly's, and whatever he's wearing here, I don't even know what he's wearing here, but we're not presenting on whatever that is. Um, this is a disclaimer, it's a one-on-one -on -one level. Uh, what's the purpose of this presentation? It's to do an implementation of a natural user interface. We will go through what that is, what, uh, what a GUI actually is. Also to spur ideas for you guys, um, you know, if you can add one or two things out of this presentation, then you, know, you have an idea of what to program, that would be basically my um, purpose here for you guys. And it will be focused more mainly on uh, mainly on, uh, on C sharp programming. So. Okay, so for our agenda, we'll list out what we're going to present on today. Uh, we'll have an introduction. Uh, we're going to go through. We will talk about the development environment we will use to produce this reality-based interface. We will have gestural input. Um, we will talk about physics, how that uh, interacts with uh, reality. And also, we will uh, for ten minutes or so, we'll talk about virtual reality. So. Uh, these timings are basically off based on when I, when I tested the presentation, so we'll see how it goes. It's kind of more of a ratio of how much we're going to talk about certain topics. And we'll have a Q&A if there's time. Okay, so what is a natural user interface? Uh, when you Wikipedia this uh, term, you get back something called it is an invisible interface, and the interaction is natural. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, but the Apple iOS is a good implementation of a NUI, so uh, most of us have used a, an Apple iOS before. Um, when something's not a natural user interface, uh, in, in this case look down here, we're using artificial control devices. So we're talking about a mouse and we're talking about a QWERTY keyboard or the board key, the board keyboard. Um, if you think about it, you know, a lot of us are touch typists now and it, it seems like it's second nature, but it's really not. If you take if you step back and look at your keyboard, it's amazing that we know how to type on it when all the letters are all over the place. It's not actually a natural interface for us to communicate with a computer. Okay, so there are a couple more definitions we're going to talk about. There is something called virtual reality, and there's something called augmented reality. So even before this presentation, even I was fuzzy a little bit on what, you know, what the heck are these things, what's VR versus AR. Uh, virtual reality here, you can see the virtual board, which for Nintendo was like way ahead of their time, I think, but it's quite some time ago. You're isolated from the real, real world, right? Um, in this case, you're, you're totally blocked out. You don't see anything with the real world. I don't see anything in this room. I don't see that clock or whatever. With augmented reality, I think we've all seen this image of the HoloLens, it's blending of virtual reality and the real world. Um, it's also termed mixed reality. So Google Glass is a good example. Of course, it's decommissioned right now, I think. But 
Um, you know, if you look at something and you still see the real world and you kind of augment it with you know, virtual reality computer information, that's augmented reality. Okay, so we're going to jump in immediately then to the development environment. So the first thing I'm going to ask here is how many people have used Unity 3D before? Okay, a little bit. So I opened it up. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's, uh, I like that there's nobody answering because otherwise a lot of the presentation is on like how do you program something, how do you program a reality-based you know, interface. So it's going to t we're going to talk about Unity 3D. Um, how many people have heard of Unity 3D before I just said it? Okay, good. So I had also heard of, good, there are more people here. Um, I have also heard of Unity 3D, but I didn't really know before, you know, a couple months ago, you know, what's, what's involved with all this stuff. It is a Microsoft product. Um, it's free and there's a paid version as well. So we're going to be demonstrating the free version now. I don't know exactly all the things that come with the professional paid version, but I was able to accomplish quite a bit um, in the free version. Um, it is a game engine and ecosystem. Um, so what does that mean? Basically, it has the capability to produce uh, software and get it to the market. Um, we're not going to talk much about the you know, marketization of our applications here. That could be a totally separate um, presentation. Uh, but you can deploy to 10 or over 10 platforms. I think this number is actually much higher than 10 now. But what this means is you can actually do any build that you want, you know, build your application out. And you can say, I want to deploy it to the mobile, a mobile device now. I want to deploy it to a desktop software. I want to make it a VR application. And you don't have to change, as far as I know, you don't have to change your code. It's going to try to build it into that um, deployment model for you on the fly. What is it not? Um, it's not a 2D graphic creation tool. So the first time you open, uh, the first time you open uh, Unity up, it, it looks confusing, and I'll show you guys that. Obviously, we're going to work through it. Um, you don't create graphics in there. Um, you're going to have a, gra a graphics designer help you kind of create a texture. Let's say they're not going to come into this application and do it. Um, it's also not a 3D model environment. Um, I'll show you a little bit of modeling that we can do in the application, but it's not something like Blender. Um, I do co uh, call it basically the Photoshop for developers, though, because when you open Photoshop, it seems like there's so many options and menus that you can run through. It seems a little bit confusing at first. So for a developer, it's kind of like a tool set for you to develop 3D applications. OK, so where are some of the features of Unity 3D? Uh, it has an editor basically for scene assembly. So the scene is basically your level. Um, you can have multiple levels in your application. So when I'm saying game a lot of times here, this, you can interchange this with application. Okay, so. I don't have a lot of business uh, use for some of these things that we're going to code, but you don't have to necessarily code a game in Unity. You can actually code an application if you'd like. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, but Unity basically is a 3D uh, application creator. So most people are using it for games. Um, so once again, uh, the scene and the level basically lets you uh, uh, assemble a level, and you can have multiple levels in your program. It has an in-editor gameplay, so while you're developing your level or um, application scene, you can debug it basically on the fly. And we'll, we'll definitely get into that stuff. Um, it includes physics with the PhysX engine. Whether or not people care about this, it's for free. So the Unreal Engine 4, which is used in a lot of games, is already included in here for you. And we will de definitely be dealing with some physics uh, during our application coding, and we'll, we'll see how that works. You can then, uh, if you want to do um, coding in Unity 3D, you have to write scripts in C Sharp or JavaScript. So you actually can deploy your applications to as a web a web application. Now we're not going to get into the JavaScript side very much. We'll be dealing with C Sharp, but that's a little bit interesting note. Um, it has 2D 3D support. It has 2D 3D audio. It has particle effects. Uh, one of the major things that included is an asset store. So I was actually talking to G, I think a, a couple weeks ago, and he's playing with Unity as well. Um, you know, when you when you first get into it, it's like, oh gosh, I don't know. Like, um, I think I zoomed here a little bit. It's not the right key. Uh, I don't know how to create some of this stuff. Like, it when you first get it, you kind of get overwhelmed. This asset store basically has like full projects that other people have done. Um, not everything is uh, free, but uh, some of the stuff here is free. So let's say you're developing a 3D application and. In this case, you want some animal, like you want a dog in the game. You don't know how to get a dog. There may, there may be a free dog, actually, in this animal uh, box right here. You may have to pay for it as well, but you can actually t um, buy that package and import it into any of the applications that you want to uh, work with. OK, so we're going to get to the first demo. So there are a lot of demos in here. Um, so I'll just walk, I'll walk through them with you guys. So the, what I like to do when I present is I try not to hide anything from you guys. So I do have a couple scripts we're going to write, but I'm going to write them from scratch for you guys. So everything that we do for the most part is as you see. What you see is what you get. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is start up Unity and create a new project. Um, so I'll give you guys a demo for that.
So when you start up Unity, you're going to get this screen here, and you're going to click New. We'll call this My First Reality Game. So the first thing I wanted to show here is that you can actually create 2D applications with this as well. We won't be uh, talking about 2D much in this presentation because it's not as cool, but um, basically what it does is it fixes the camera. So in 3D games, like, you know, the camera is flying all over the place usually. In a 2D game, there, the camera is fixed, so it's basically you're only dealing with kind of an X and Y axis, not necessarily the Z axis. Um, they added that very recently. It's only been a few months, I think, since they've added this 2D capability. Um, the first thing as well, when you open this thing, you'll see this thing called Asset uh, Packages. Um, we'll talk about this later, but um, we have talked about assets just briefly right now. These are things that Unity includes for free for you. So it might think that, hey, you, you have some environment that you're gonna, uh, you might want to use um, some package. So what's inside the environment package in this case are like sky textures and other types of textures that you might want to use in a basic application. Um, we will get into that later, but for now I'm not going to import anything. I just want to keep it as a clean project. So we're just going to say create project. Okay. Okay, so the first thing uh, is the projector is the resolution is a little bit off, so I can't see the very top of this screen. Uh, I noticed and I'm not able to like, kind of move it. Move it so. Um, it's enough for me to actually still continue for you guys, but whenever I'm talking about stuff, you'll just have to kind of help, you'll just have to look up to the top of this. That's clipped on there as it is for me too. So um, so the first thing is, I think I'm going to go back to my slides here, but basically this is what you're presented with when you first load up Unity 3D. So when I first installed it um, and ran it, I don't know what G's impression was, but I was like confused. <laughs> I'm like, there's just a lot of windows, and I'm like, this is going to take some time to learn. But it actually isn't that bad. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, we have an idea kind of, of what's going on here and what we can do with it. We're going to break this down basically. The next couple of slides, we're going to break down what's happening um, in this uh, application. Yep. Okay, so I want to make one comment that uh, scenes or levels an application is basically one or many scenes. Okay, so what we're looking at, if we go back to Unity, this is our first scene. Um, nothing's going on in here. Um, you know, I'm just looking, just looking around right now. This is just an empty scene. So whenever you start up a new scene, this is what, uh, this is what you're going to get when you say file new scene. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so the first, uh, another demo we're going to do here is where you're going to start seeing a lot of characters, so just don't laugh. <laughs> um, Luigi says to do like a layout demo. So what I want to show you guys <laughs> is um, this layout. So what happens in Visual Studio a lot, right, is uh, you might drag a window and you're like, ah, you know, like it's very easy to take uh, code files and accidentally move them to the wrong spot. And now you're like, what the heck's going on here? Um, the layout up here lets you go back to the default. You know, this is kind of the default view. When you're learning, you're, you're probably going to be in this view. Um, there are other views that you might play with, you know, two by three, four split, once you get a little bit um, more advanced, you know, with uh, using this application. But for the demo purpose, we're going to be in this default view. Okay, so we won't read this too much. Yoshi says that they've given our demo here. So um, we want to create a terrain and UI navigation. So what I want to show you guys is how to navigate kind of in this application. The one thing you want to know then is you really want to use a three button mouse. So I think everybody, most people have a three button mouse now. So the three button mouse is the two uh, mouse buttons and the scroll wheel that's clickable, right? Um, so we won't, we won't, we'll skip over this and I'll just show you some of this stuff. Um, the first thing I want to do though is create a terrain. You don't have to pay attention to this too much. This just helps us kind of it helps me show you guys how I'm trying to navigate. So, um, we're going to talk about game objects here shortly, but I'm going to create a, a terrain by going to game object, 3D object, terrain. Okay, um, just bear with me for a second now. So, basically, a terrain is this very large uh, object that you can make uh, you can make mountains with, right? So we won't get into these options too much right now, but basically I'm going to raise and lower the terrain here. And this I actually thought was very cool. I think the first time that I did it, I'm like, almost immediately, I'm like, wow, I'm creating these mountains and stuff. I don't know if you've gotten this far or not, G, with uh, you know, getting it going to the editor, but. I was, I started out with 2D only, so okay. I was. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not going to see the mountains. Yeah. You can still create the mountains, but you won't see the you know 3D yeah. effect. You know, you kind of see you know, you know what's going on right here, maybe. Thank you. 
So this is where I'm, uh, when I'm developing stuff, uh, you know, I, I could waste a lot of time here. Like, it's actually a lot of fun when you're, you know, you're zooming in, kind of looking at all the stuff that you, you're creating. I'll probably stop around here for now. Um, but we do have a purpose for this later on in the, in the demo. Let's get this down here. Landscape. Landscaping, yeah. So I will, there will be some landscaping going on in the presentation. I, I do enjoy landscaping on the side, but this is not my landscaping skill <laughs> being exhibited right now. <laughs> I mean, you can't create mountains, right? I mean, I can't go in my backyard and just like, plant a mountain somewhere. But <laughs> okay, my idea was just basically to create some object here, so I can kind of show you guys how you can move around in the world. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is the mouse, right? So if I click on the middle mouse, just to I can pan basically. So um, you're going to have panning going on. You can also pan, I think, by clicking on this hand and then doing the same thing. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of rotation as well, so that's the right, that's the right mouse um, to try to get around the object. So Unity development is a lot of this, like dragging and dropping objects uh, on the, into your uh, 3D environment and like spit, uh, moving into the right spot and just like looking at it to make sure it's you know, exactly where you want it. Um, when you, it does take a couple hours, so it looks like, like right now, um, maybe it looks like I know what I'm doing, I don't, I don't feel like it right now when I'm just looking at stuff, but um, it was a lot harder than, I don't know how you felt, but it was a lot harder for me, I think, the first hour or two, just like navigating around um, the application. It was, it's just a new feeling, you know, because you've got a 3D, you have a 3D environment you're dealing with versus anything else that you were typically programming in your career is a 2D thing, right? So, um, there are, uh, let's see, there's this XYZ thing, so I mean, you can click on, it's hard to read a little bit there, but you can click on these things and it kind of will just navigate a little, it'll help you, like in this case I can see like above the scene, if I need to see above the scene. Um, I can try to go around it. Um, a lot of times I'll get lost here, like if you're doing all stuff, you kind of get lost. What you can do is, you can right click, it's, it's difficult to see, or you can right click on something and say free, and then it'll let you go into a free mode. So what happened is I um, also went from perspective view into isometric view. So perspective view, for the most part, is where you're probably going to be in most of the time trying to navigate around. Isometric view is nice because right here you can see when I'm rotating on perspective, I'm just kind of rotating where I'm standing. If I change it to isometric view, I can kind of spin around an object. Okay, so there are times when you're probably going to um, want to see, you know, just rotation around the object. And this is actually probably what G is dealing with when he's dealing with 2D. What happens is it flattens, it kind of flattens the world and it, it looks like this. It still looks kind of cool, but... Um, it's basically in a 2D world. So most of the time you're going to be in perspective mode and you're going to be probably in the free mode where you're just kind of you know, moving around. Okay, so let's get some, into some of the other windows that are in the applications. There's something called a hierarchy window. Um, in the hierarchy window is everything in your scene. So, and we can double click on things to focus on them. So we don't have a lot in our scene right now, but we're basically talking about this window over here. Um, Everything in the hierarchy window is a, is a game object, so we'll get into that uh, in briefly. But uh, basically, if you need to find an object in your scene, you can double click on it. So like here, I don't know where my camera is, let's say, so I'll, I'm going to double click on the camera and it's just going to zoom, it's just going to focus to where it is. There's a directional light, we'll get into that, and there's a terrain. So that's basically what the hierarchy window is for. Okay, so every scene that you create, it contains a main camera. Um, we saw that briefly here, it already has this camera. So the camera is basically um, how you see your game. Right now what you can see is there's a camera preview here. So wherever the camera is in your world right now, basically this is what it's going to see when you actually try to play the game. If we see in this small window, it's not showing very much, it's off the edge. And we'll get into that, how to move this thing around basically. But right now if I started the game up, it wouldn't really show much. Um, Every object, in this case, it has, uh, it has properties, okay? So if we go back to this, on the main camera, there's something called an inspector window. So I call this basically Visual Studio's properties window, right? So when you click to open a file, you see the properties of that object. Um, every object has similar properties up until a point, and we'll get into that. But basically a main camera, in this case, if we look at this properties window, we see that it has uh, a name to it and it has a transform, and we'll, we'll get into that briefly here. Um, if we go a directional light, we'll also see it has a transform. A terrain also has a transform. I think I have a slide here about that. Yeah, so in the transform of any game object, you can control basically its scale, its rotation, and its position. So what is that stuff? Basically, scale is how big is the object in the world, you know, smaller or bigger. Rotation is, you know, how can we spin it around or how can we, how can we control, like, how it looks in the, in the world. And translation is how can we move it. It's more of the position of the object, okay? 
So if we look at the main camera and we open up the transform, we will see those things we talked about. Position, rotation, and scale. Same with directional light, position, rotation, and scale. And in terrain, you'll see the same thing here, position, rotation, and scale. In Unity and in a 3D environment, you're going to be dealing a lot with this kind of stuff, the transformation of an object. Okay? So without, without manipulating this transform, you just have objects sitting there. right? So right now, the terrain is just sitting there. It's not doing anything. That's probably what it's going to do for the life, uh, life of our game, actually. But there's obviously going to be other things in our game that we're going to want to kind of make the scale change, let's say, or definitely the position. right? It's going to start moving. Um, talk about the